okay guys uh, now let us talk about uh, the nucleic acid sequencing and we are going to talk about the Sanger method of nucleic acid sequencing which is a very very important method of uh, nucleic acid sequencing though uh, based on a very basic technique now if we look for uh, a DNA sequence now suppose you are a researcher you get a DNA sequence and you need to know that what is the sequence and what is the sequence of the DNA you are working with because if we know the sequence of a DNA uh, it is it will be a lot easier for us to work with that thing okay so suppose uh, this is the DNA sequence that we get we are just considering about the one uh, strand which is the template strand now if you look for the template strand if you know the DNA sequence for the template strand as we know we can uh, eventually know the sequence for the opposite strand that is really really easy for researching with DNA so we need to know only the sequence of one strand now suppose this is the strand we are looking for 3 prime to 5 prime so this is the strand we need to know the sequence of the strand but we generally do not know now, now for the first place now how can we know the sequence we go for the Sanger method of uh, this sequencing which is also called the chain terminator sequencing as well as it is called the dideoxy sequencing method for DNA sequencing now why it is called chain termination because you can see this in this method we are actually terminating the chain uh, from one one side now using this method uh, the basic uh, concept about uh, using this method is that using a uh, separate types of uh, uh, sub nucleotide so for the sequencing method what we will go we will produce we will use a primer uh, suppose we need we have to produce this template strand uh, or suppose we have the DNA we need to look for the sequence what we will do for the first place we need to separate both of the strands from each other so we separate those strands from each other and finally have one strand uh, in this case we are taking the template strand with us now uh, with this template strand we will uh, make a copy of the of uh, uh, or, or a replica of this template strand which is which, which will be exactly complementary to the template strand so we will we'll we, we are trying to make the replication of this template strand or, or a copy of this template strand okay for making this copy of the template strand or a complementary sequence of the template strand what we need in this case in this case we need uh, the different uh, nucleotide triphosphates okay so in this case what we need we need adenosine triphosphate guanosine triphosphate cytidine triphosphate and thymine tri uh, for hospital okay so we have to have the ATP CTP GDP and TTP in these cases so we'll add all these things in the test tube and look for uh, whether they can produce it or not in normal or basic point of view of ours understanding about the DNA sequence is that if we add all these things if we add the polymerase and look for the sequence then what happens polymer uh, DNA po polymerase take all of this new, uh, ATP CTP GTP TTP and they start to attach uh, uh, in, in the right orientation suppose we are having the C uh, so so the out portion of it which is the G so it will attach uh, one G right against the C and again it will attach another G right against the C it will attach the C here again again C then again A uh, like that so it will attach the nucleotide sequences according to their complementarity so and go on to finally make the sequence now what we are using here is a very clever trick to find out the sequence by looking at it how can we know in this case what we are using we are using all of this ACP, uh, all of this nucleotide triphosphate but along with the nucleotide phosphate in four different sets of test tubes we are using four individual type of specialized nucleotide triphosphate in this case these specialized nucleotide triphosphate are called the dideoxynucleotide triphosphates or DD uh, nucleotide triphosphates so in this case uh, suppose in the first test tube we are using for, uh, all of those uh, four nucleotides which are really really important along with that we are using DDATP in the second test tube we are using DDCTP third DDGTP and fourth test tube DDTTP in all those four test tube we are using the polymerase and the necessary ingredients for the for the replication a uh, thing and we are using those uh, necessary normal nucleotide triphosphates but using all uh, and we are using uh, or what we are differing in these four test tubes that in the all of these four test tubes we are, we are using uh, a separate types of DD nucleotide triphosphate in, in this case okay by using them what is our actual goal is that that this uh, DD or dideoxy nucleotide triphosphate has a, a capability of terminating the sequence or terminating uh, the elongation of uh, the replication of DNA because if we look at here this is the chain and 
when uh, suppose it start to grow in the op opposite orientation so in the opposite orientation the complementary strand will start to grow and whenever it it uh, finally find uh, 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 dd or dideoxy uh, nucleotide triphosphate it will attach to that and it, it will stop the uh, replication process there so whenever suppose in this case if we are using the dd adenosine triphosphate dideoxy adenosine triphosphate but that means it will continue the trans uh, it will continue the replication process till it find uh, uh, the presence of uh, adenosine triphosphate so whenever it find the place for attaching an adenosine triphosphate it will attach and right after the attachment no longer it will be able to attach with the other type of nucleotide so suppose here so we have the cc and and the, that means we have a c here we have another c right against t and here we have a t that means we have to attach an adenos, uh, uh, adenosine uh, triphosphate so we are, we are having this adenosine triphosphate so we are using this adenosine triphosphate here so the adenosine triphosphate will go and attach with this thymine so as uh, soon as the adenosine triphosphate dideoxy adenosine triphosphate is start to attach with this thymine uh, 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 or with this T, what happened? It will block the attachment of all the other uh, nucleotide sequences right after this dideoxy adenosine triphosphate because this dideoxy triphosphates are having the uh, having uh, are lacking the oxygen uh, in two positions rather than one position because in DNA what we are having we are having uh, the presence uh, or the absence of oxygen in the second carbon position of ribose sugar but in case of this dideoxy adenosine triphosphate they are lacking this uh, oxygen in two position that actually block the further elongation of this nu uh, nucleotide chains that's why it will terminate the nucleotide chain that's why we call them the chain termination ch uh, uh, procedure okay now for the first test tube what we'll do we uh, we are adding all these ingredients except for the adenosine triphosphate so we are omitting the normal adenosine triphosphate instead of the presence of normal adenosine triphosphate we are adding the dideoxy adenosine triphosphate but in the second uh, test tube what we are doing we are just taking out the uh, normal uh, ctp instead of normal ctp we are giving the ddctp and in the third test tube instead of having the normal gtp we are using ddgtp and the fourth test tube instead of having the normal ttp we are using ddtt by by substituting uh, one of those nucleotide sequences in, in each test tube we are, we are uh, using the deoxy or uh, dideoxy sequences and what this dideoxy sequences are doing this is actually terminating the chains which has been carried out which has been uh, start which has been gone uh, starting from one place now uh, suppose after uh, doing this what we go we use this thing to to make this elongation of the opposite chain so after the elongation what we have in the first test tube right after after some time uh, this uh, sequence will be terminated here uh, right after attachment of this adenosine because we are uh, using adenosine triphosphate dideoxy adenosine triphosphate here so uh, after right after attachment of adenosine in the first test tube whole reaction will be stopped and and we get something like that now in the second place what we are using we are using ddctp that means right after the attachment of this ctp there uh, the others uh, uh, all the other attachment will be blocked okay so these things will be happened all the time okay after uh, uh, happening uh, all these things so what we will get we will get a mixture of different fragment uh, length of nucleotide sequences uh, 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 nucleotide sequences of this dna now what we will do we just take all these things together and load them on uh, on a gel we can uh, for example here uh, we can see here we have a gel and in the gel right after the, the uh, having this fragments different uh, length of fragments from different test tubes we are using we are taking those uh, gels out from the test tube 1 we are putting it in the well one, well a and from the test tube 2 we are putting it well c from the test tube g uh, c we are take, taking it uh, take it into well g and from the test tube 4 we are taking it into the well t so we are marking them as the presence uh, of how we are adding those dd uh, uh, nucleotides so if uh, in the first place we are producing dd atp that's why we mark the well a we are uh, in the second test tube we are using dd ctp that's why we are mark c so that's how we are marking here now after that we'll run the gel and after running the gel uh, we we have the result now after having this result what we can see we can analyze the place of the band because after using this uh, gel electrophoresis technique we we know that using this gel electrophoresis we can actually separate uh, the nucleotide sequences the nucleotide strands according to their charge as well as their 
length so the long uh, so the, so the nucleotide sequence which are having the long length or the longer length we, we can have them at the end and which are having the smaller length we can have at, uh, we can we can travel faster we can having at the last point so here we have uh, from the smaller uh, range towards the higher range now if we look all these things uh, by uh, comparing one place to another place then we can what we can find by looking at this thing is that the first sequence what we are looking at here is an a then the second sequence we are looking at is a G because in, in, in this range we are not having any sequence of C A and T so we are having only G in the third uh, line we are having only the T because we are not having a C G in the fourth line we are also having T in the in the fifth we are having the G and all these things so uh, that's how we can know the sequence of the complementary strand of the prime of the strand we need to know the sequence so right after knowing the sequence of the complementary strand what we need to know is the actual sequence of the template strand now when we go, go get the sequence of the complementary strand we can look for the sequence easily by just looking at here so as we are having this structure from 3 to 5 prime then the uh, then the uh, template strand of ours we definitely have a structure uh, like g g t a g c a a c and t because we are having the complementary using the argos rule uh, that c also is always pair with g and a always pair with T. That means wherever we are having C uh, uh, in in uh, this complementary strand, that means we are having G in the template strand. So we are having A in the complementary strand. That means we are having the T in the uh, template strand. So we are having the template strand of the exactly uh, uh, complementary in nature. By looking at this, we can denote and we can make uh, the structure visible for us now that's that's the techniques what we are using for knowing uh, the sequence of a small stretch of I mean a s nucleotide sequence now this uh, reaction or this procedure will work only using a smaller stretch of amino acid a smaller uh, sorry smaller stretches of nucleotide sequences if we have a higher if you have a very long uh, sequence of nucleotide if you're having a very long uh, DNA sequence that in those cases we cannot use this process because in those cases we need to go through further division of the fragmentation of those DNA sequences because for this purpose we need to take those uh, uh, the, those fragments and look for uh, the the gel electrophoresis and if we are having uh, the large uh, fragments then uh, we, we can we may have trouble in gel electrophoresis process that's why we need to chew those large components of large DNA fragments uh, into the smaller fragments then uh, we can do for this sequencing method so this is a very important sequencing method by uh, for knowing what is the sequence for the DNA what is the sequence for the nucleotides okay so that's it and I hope that's gonna help you thank you